I was interviewed in the Harvard Business Review and asked, what's the number one problem of all the successful people I've worked with over the years? And small business people are terrible about this one. Winning too much. What's that mean? If it's important, we want to win. Meaningful. Win. Critical. Win. Trivial. Win. Not worth it. Win anyway. Winners love winning. I'm going to give you a case study about winning too much that almost all my successful clients fail. My guess says you'll fail it and almost all the listeners will. It sounds like this. You want to go to dinner at restaurant X. Your husband, wife, partner, friend wants to go to dinner at restaurant Y. Have a heated argument. You go to restaurant Y. It was not your choice. The food tastes awful and the service is terrible. Option A, critique the food. Point out our partner was wrong. This mistake could have been avoided if only you'd listened to me, me, me. Option B, shut up, eat the stupid food, try to enjoy it and have a nice evening. What would I do? What should I do? Almost all my clients, what would I do? Critique the food. What should I do? Shut up. <laughs> well, I, now I'm going to give you a worse example. You have a hard day at work, a hard day. You go home, your husband, wife, friend, or partner's there, and the other person says, I had such a hard day today. I had such a tough day. And we reply, you had a hard day. You had a hard day. Do you have any idea what I had to put up with today? You think you had a hard day? We're so competitive, we have to prove we're more miserable than the people we live with. I gave this example to my class at Dartmouth. A young guy in the back raised his hand. He goes, I did that last week. I asked him, what happened? He said, my wife looked at me. She said, honey, you just think you had a hard day. It's not over. <laughs> well, very hard to have the discipline when you're a winner, not to win all the time, always be right, always prove you're better. Let me give you one positive example. It's related to my book, Triggers. It's in the book. A young man sent me an email that had been to my class, and he said, I want to send you an email today and say thank you. He says, I know you don't remember me. I was in your class five years ago. He said, my wife called me up yesterday, and she was having a terrible day. And I was just getting ready to point out how her problems paled in significance to my own. But I remembered your class, and I stopped, I listened, and I, I just said, I love you. Thank you for all you've done for the family. And, and he said, I went home and I spent $25 and I bought her some flowers and I gave her the flowers and I said, I love you. He said, that's the best $25 I've ever spent. Thank you very much. Well, that's what my book Triggers is about. We're always going to have triggers. There are always going to be things that set us off. And we're always going to have an impulse. But if we can learn to become aware of what's going on around us, to breathe, to stop, slow down that 275 mile an hour brain and realize I have a choice about my behavior then we're much more likely to become the person that we want to be, not the person the world is creating.